In Central Texas, cotton was king. The number of everyday things made from this crop is mind-boggling. But a very specific product from cotton was the entire reason for this structure in Elgin, Texas. This is the Elgin Cottonseed Oil Mill, and today on Expedition Texas, we're headed in to explore. Texas is full of lost history. From lost cemeteries to abandoned buildings. From the infamous to the obscure. Hitch a ride and travel across the Lone Star State, looking for hints of Texas' colorful past. Our lost history. This is Expedition Texas, and we're going to find it. Texas is known for a lot of things. Several movies have been filmed here. Elgin's Main Street is a standout of the Main Street program and has been selected as a national Main Street city multiple times. One of its leading industries for decades was cottonseed oil, the byproduct of cotton processing. Cottonseed is considered virtually worthless before the late 19th century. While cotton production expanded through the 17th, 18th, and mid 19th centuries, a largely worthless stock of cottonseed grew. Although some of the seed was used for planting, fertilizer, and animal feed, the majority was left to rot or illegally dumped into rivers. Looking for a replacement for expensive animal fats in production of their candles, the Procter & Gamble Company, made up of brothers-in-law, finally settled on cottonseed oil. In 1899, David Wesson, a food chemist, developed deodorized cottonseed oil, Wesson cooking oil. Wesson oil was also marketed very heavily and became quite popular. That's what led to places like this mill in Elgin, popping up all over the country to squeeze valuable oil from these tiny seeds. The Lundgren family settled in Elgin in the 1800s and until 2014 ran this cottonseed oil mill. Brian Lundgren tells us about the family business. Well, it started out, the mill was a kind of a co-op type deal. It was owned by gins around the area. And my grandfather was the manager of that. And at some point in the 30s, he ended up buying the co-op out and took over the business himself. Uh, he unfortunately had a heart attack in the late 50s and passed on. And then my uncle, the old junior, uh, we call him Sammy, he took over running the place, and then my dad came back and helped him out, and so the two of them ran it <clears throat> all through the through the late 80s, I guess. 2014 actually it probably goes back to 2011. We had that really bad drought here that year, and that was probably the last nail in our coffin. We had been, like I said, everything's getting bigger and bigger, and uh, we knew the time was going to come where we weren't going to be able to make it anymore. And it finally just got to the point where we weren't making any money, and we were just, you know, weren't getting anywhere. So we decided to shut it down. The mill closed in 2014, but today we're here in Elgin to explore the operation with Brian. Hey, Brian, how's it going, man? Hey, Bob. Welcome to Elgin. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. So, uh, blacksmith shop here. We just came around from the other way, checking out the inside of that. But it's what's right over there that I want to talk about. Uh, tell me a little bit about this. Uh, what, what we're going to see here today? Well, it's the old Elgin Cotton Oil Mill. Uh, it hadn't been in business now for several years. Uh, it operated for well over 100 years. And been been in my family for about 75 years or something like that. So we're kind of taking a walk down memory lane for you here today, right? Yes, sir, pretty much. All, All right, man. Grew up in the place. That's awesome. Well, we, we see the tracks split off of the train over here. Kind of show us the way. Maybe we'll follow the old railroad tracks and their path into the... Okay. <laughs> finding cool stuff here Brian what, what is this looks like a scale of some sort the last time it was inspected by the Ag Texas Department of Agriculture was in 1979 so I guess that's the last time we used it be sure to subscribe to Expedition Texas on YouTube watch classic episodes behind the scenes videos and new episodes right after they air Expedition Texas is on YouTube We're in 
Elgin, Texas, where we've met up with Brian Lundgren. Brian's family owned the Elgin Cotton Oil Mill. We're hiking over to explore the mill now, but earlier we sat down for a chat with Amy Miller, Director of Community Development in Elgin. Amy invited us to Elgin and wanted to tell us about some of the great things that are happening there. In the mid-1990s, this was a town of about 4,800, and today we find ourselves capping 10,000 plus. Uh, we have this really vibrant, thriving downtown district that creates kind of a community center for everyone, uh, but we do have lots of growth happening, especially on the, well, the east and west sides of the community. Um, we are part of the ACC Community College System, the Austin Community College System. So we have a campus in Elgin that specializes in sustainable sustainable agriculture and vet technology and they've been a great supporter in our growth as we've been um, expanding and more folks moving here and on our part we that downtown business district is filled with a huge variety of businesses everything from uh, dry cleaning to gift stores uh, double our hat which is a hat shaper there's metal smithing you have uh, lots of great restaurants um, service businesses like insurance and real estate and finance uh, but pretty much everything you need um, from fine jewelry uh, to shoe repair is in our downtown. Back on the side of the cotton oil mill, we follow the railroad tracks into the side of the mill. Not all of the buildings remain, some are just tiny structures with stacks and stacks of old records inside. So what is this building here that we're coming by? That's an old office that, uh, from the cotton warehouse that used to be here. Uh, it wasn't really part of the oil mill, but we bought the property back in the uh, late 1900s. Uh, and there's probably still some old records in there from both the cotton business and our and the oil mill. Other elements are simply sitting out exposed to nature. Well, we're not getting very far in and we're already finding cool stuff here. Brian, what, what is this? Looks like a scale of some sort. Well, now, how does this work here? I see there's some kind of lever here. All right. What is actually. They changed it since they did. But, uh, yeah, it was a, the thing would actually could go up to 100,000 pounds. Go up to 100,000 pounds. Might, might be enough to hold me. <laughs> Very cool piece of old equipment there. Last time it was inspected by the Texas Department of Agriculture was in 1979, so I guess that's the last time we used it. Wow, there's a lot of this still here. Yes, sir, most of the buildings are still standing. Um, so what all are we looking at here? Well, all these buildings are part of the oil mill process. This is our office right here by, uh, behind the camera. We sold a little retail feed out of that uh, storage room right there. The two bigger buildings over here to our right, <coughs> those are for cottonseed stores. Uh, the incoming cottonseed we'd unload it and store it in those buildings and bring it into the plant, which is over here, to be processed. This is a storage building for one of the byproducts. So which one can we get into first? <laughs> Probably right here will get you into everything. Okay, let's go. We're following you. So talk to me about this room. What happened in here? This is the main processing room, Bob. Uh, the seed would be delimited in the room next to us. <clears throat> and then it separated. There's actually a kernel, kind of like a sunflower. There's a kernel inside the seed. We separate that kernel from the hull. The hull is shipped out to storage out there, and that's used for cattle feed, roughage type things. Not, not much feed value, but roughage. Then the kernel is uh, brought in, heated up in the cooker over here, and then this is where it runs through those expellers that we talked about earlier. It actually runs the cottonseed kernels through there and squeezes them out and squeezes the oil out. And what comes out the other side is cottonseed meal, which is a high protein uh, capital supplement. Really? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're making all kinds of things so in there's here. There's actually four products that come out of cottonseed, yes sir. Whoa! What's with the giant roll of toilet paper? <laughs> kind of what it looks like, isn't it? Yeah, what's up with that? Actually, that goes on this machine right here, which is a filter press. A filter press, yeah, okay. So we take the freshly squeezed extracted oil. Yeah. It comes out of the expellers, and then it's pumped through there, and it takes a lot of the fines and stuff like that out of it. So we get our semi-refined semi crude oil from that. Semi-refined? Yeah. Because they pass it through it giant sheet of paper. Yes, sir. Is it okay if I go up and check out this, this cotton seed sucker? I'm very trusting of this old construction. You said y'all built this though, right? It should last forever, right? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Elgin, 
Elgin, Texas, exploring the old Elgin Cotton Oil Mill with former owner Brian Lundgren. Earlier, while waiting to meet up with Brian, we visited the Earth and Metals Blacksmith Shop, located in one of the old warehouses near the Cotton Oil Mill. Tiger and Aaron Flores can make almost anything out of metal. Uh, well, we do a lot of blacksmithing and welding. We build a lot of things, a lot of handrails and gates for residential mainly. Also a lot of repair work and antique rest restoration, a lot of general welding repairs, a lot of uh, farm and agricultural repairs with the welding. Back on the side of the cotton oil mill, we're working our way through the operation where several large machines are still standing in the expansive tin buildings. The equipment to the well, my left over here, those are delinters. That's what takes the lint off the cotton seed okay. that we had referenced earlier. So it first goes through a cleaner, and it goes through those linters. And then the lint gets bailed in a bell press up there, kind of like an old cotton bale. Yeah. You remember from way back? Then the holes, the, the black seed is brought in here and to corticate it, called cutting the seed. Yeah. Uh, it separates the kernel from the hole. The kernels are then run through this big crushing roll. Okay. With the wheels on it right here. All right. That thing weighs. Tons. Crushing roll. And what that does, it, it crushes the kernels and seed in it and it pops the little oil glands for better extraction. <laughs> Man, who would have thought a little bitty seed had something you can make so much oil out of? Yep. Yeah. It does quite a bit. Oh, look. Workplace safety, right? <laughs> right. Always a must. <laughs> Take care of your back, lift with your legs, not your back. It's amazing how much of the equipment is still in there, but uh, I'm kind of curious about, we've got this big building over here that you said was where everything was stored when it came in. So we're kind of going through the process backward here. And then a, a big tower up there. What happened up there? That's actually a grain elevator. We also handled grain uh, starting about in the 60s, I guess it was. Just okay. kind of as a summer deal uh, okay. between the running seasons for the mill. We handled grain in there also, but that's predominantly cottonseed storage building. Well, that looks like a big, dark, ominous building, and yeah. I want to go check it out. Okay. All right. <clears throat> There's our seat unloaded right here. It's like a big old vacuum cleaner. It's actually a lot of manual labor. You see those two handles on there. Those guys get up in there and just vacuum that seat out. This this is cotton seed, yes, sir. Oh, so this is this was the the raw goods here. This is what was brought in, right? That's probably that's of course it's dirty. It's been sitting around for ten years. But it was cleaner yeah. looking then. But that's probably like right there. There's put the mule. Look like rats got a little bit. You oh wow. That's even, there's a yeah. kernel in there, the stuff's so old. That yeah, so oh, this one this one feels pretty fat and full though. Yeah. But so the delinter takes all this off. Takes all that fuzz off. So then inside. There's a kernel just like sunflower, sunflower seed. Okay. Then y'all broke those off. Mm -hmm. And then the cotton seed inside <clears throat> of there. The little kernel. And that's where that's you pressed there. and got oil from. Correct. Millions and billions and trillions of these little guys. Yep, a bunch of them. Are what it took to make cotton seed oil. So you could eat your McFries. So lots of little remnants around of the family business around here. Right. Of course, that's old cotton seeds. Right. They're probably not very usable anymore. Been laying around for a long time. So I want to. Is it okay if I go up and check out this this cotton seed sucker? Sure. Vacuum. Care for yourself. Okay. Be careful. Very trusting of this old construction. You said y'all built this though, right? Sure. Should last forever, right? Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay, so. Man, this is nice and solid. If I were a single guy, I could, I could definitely build a bachelor pad up here. Good, definitely could. This is cool. Well, so here we are up in the old Elegant Cottonseed Oil Mill. The taco. Well, next to the taco. I'm not going up there. Now, wait a minute. We have to uh, point out something here. A little bit of lost history that you guys left behind. A prestigious award. You just left it here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Elgin, 
Texas, exploring the old cotton oil mill. Our guide is Brian Lundgren. His family owned the mill until it closed in 2014. We've seen the plant operation, but now we're headed into the old office where business was handled and on a regular basis, the local farmers would gather in the morning for coffee and conversation. Oh man! It's like y'all just packed up and left one day. Yeah, it kind of looks like it, doesn't it? It's got awards on the wall, floppy disks on the counter. Floppy disks! Cool! <laughs> that was General 1-1 uh, one, one of 91 through 12-31 of 91. That's a whole year of data right there. 30 years ago. On one disk, 30 years ago. Watch out, there's some on the floor. We don't want to mess up your data. I don't think it's... Not, not gonna matter anymore. Now wait a minute, we have to uh, point out something here. A little bit of lost history that you guys left behind that you probably should have kept. And I'm gonna put this back where I got it from, but look here, it's a prestigious award. Voluntary Purchasing Groups Incorporated is pleased to recognize Elgin Cotton Oil Mill Incorporated for its achievement in qualifying as a AAA farm dealer for the year ending April 30th, 1995. A prestigious award. You just liked it here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it back where I found it. I get in trouble for that sometimes, so I'm gonna put it right back where I found it. All right. Yeah, we don't really need it anymore. Okay. It's old history. Okay. <laughs> this is actually my old desk right here. That's your desk? The scale you really? Right there, yes, sir. Oh, cool. So the scale was there. This was your desk, and uh, yeah, any uh, memories associated with your desk here? Oh yeah. Spent a lot of time there. Unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, this is our back office. This is where my dad and <coughs> uncle usually worked or stayed. This is also well known as a community coffee club. Uh, we'd always have about eight or ten farmers come in just about every morning, drink coffee and tell stories and you know how the good old boys go. This, let's see, this is the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue for February 1979. Wow. wow. Christy Brinkley, this is uh, National Lampoon's vacation era right there. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Polaroid cameras, the original Polaroid cameras, I might add. Cigarette ads, don't see those anymore. Nope. Wow, and check out the new Chevrolet. <laughs> that would be the Caprice, I'm sure. Wow. Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. I'll be darned. 1979. Cool TV right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Elgin Cotton Oil Mill. Man, I bet that was a trip down memory lane for you, man. Yes, How sir. many years again did you say you spent working there? Uh, started growing, coming down here when I was six years old. Probably spent a lot of time down here. Really? Grew up down here pretty much. Well, man, thanks for the tour. Yes, sir. Glad to show you our little piece of Texas history. Awesome, man. Thanks okay. so much. After our tour, Brian showed us a box of old souvenirs that he keeps from the mill, a place that was central to his life and a lifetime of memories in Elgin, Texas. <laughs> Another old promotional item. And that's actually Elgin Cotton Oil Company. That's probably back from the 30s. And this last one is an old memorial resolution from the Texas Cottonseed Crushers Association, which I don't believe is around anymore. Uh, it's just an honor of my father when he passed away. In little towns all over Texas, you'll find buildings like this. They served a variety of purposes and met the needs of many. Maybe it's the family story or the fondness in Brian's eyes when he talks about the old family business. One thing is for certain, next time you see Elgin on the signs as you travel along, plan a detour, swing through town and grab a couple of pounds of their famous sausage, or visit their bustling downtown. And while you're there, veer off the highway and across the tracks. There you'll catch a glimpse of the old Elgin cotton oil mill. Down the road, there's another lost legend waiting to be discovered. And on Expedition Texas, we're going to find it.